throughout time, people across the world told each other tales of how they came to be. Of heroes and monsters, romance and tragedy, death and rebirth. Mythology helped shape the ancient world explaining the unexplainable. This is Mythology Unleashed. It is a classic tale. A powerful deity looks down upon mankind in the earliest days and is displeased with what they see. In an effort to wipe the slate clean, they create a deluge that engulfs the entire known world in water, drowning all but few select survivors who go on to repopulate the earth when the waters recede. Though this narrative is often attributed solely to the biblical story of Noah, more than 200 stories of great floods exist in cultures spanning the globe. From ancient Greece to the Polynesian Islands, from China to the Mayan Empire. How is it that so many cultures, separated by vast distances of time and distance, all tell so similar a story? Could a world-spanning flood have actually taken place? The oldest known flood myth comes from Sumerian mythology. Though much of the texts have been lost to time, the basic premise has the gods set out to destroy mankind, while the sea god Enki secretly informs Ziasutra, the ruler of Shurapak, to build a large boat. Consequently, the great deluge rains down viciously over the course of seven days and seven nights. The specific details of what happened directly afterward are sadly lost, but the story finishes with the flood coming to an end, and Ziasutra honoring the gods through prostration and sacrifice. Similarly, though more detailed, the Babylonian Epic of Gilgamesh has the supreme god Enlil determined to destroy humanity, as it had grown too noisy for his liking. Though he swore the rest of the pantheon to secrecy about their plan, the god Ea went on to Unapishtim and gave him precise instructions on how to save himself and as many living beings as they could manage. So Unapishtim and a team of carpenters and reed workers built a cubicle vessel in the course of one week, and were safe from the storm that raged. After the rains had passed, Unapishtim sent out a dove and then a swallow in hopes that the birds would find nesting grounds and therefore dry land. But both the dove and the swallow returned before the sun set. It was not until he sent out a raven that the bird did not return to the boat, for dry land was found. Humanity was gradually restored, while Unapishtim and his wife were granted immortality. In the book of Genesis in the Old Testament, the Hebrew god Yahweh sought to destroy the humans descended from Adam and Eve in retribution for their corruption. God then speaks to the story's protagonist, Noah, and instructs him to build a massive ark of gopher wood in order to preserve human and animal life. When the ark is completed, Noah, his family, and the paired representatives of all animals of the earth are called upon to enter the ark. When the flood begins, all life outside the ark perishes and the rains continue for forty days and forty nights. As with Unapishtim, Noah sent out birds in order to find dry land. A dove returned with an olive branch, as sign that life had returned. And after the waters receded, all those aboard the ark disembarked to repopulate the earth, and have God's promise that he will never judge the earth with a flood again. In Greek mythology, after Lycaon attempts to offer the cooked flesh of a small boy as offering to Zeus, the god angrily turns him into a wolf before flooding the earth. Deucalion and his wife Pura 
with the aid of Prometheus, were saved from the deluge by building a large waterproof chest. After nine days of flooding, the world was destroyed, and the chest rested on top of Mount Parnassus. When the waters receded, Zeus told Deucalion and his wife to throw stones over their shoulders. And the stones thrown by Deucalion became men, and those thrown by, behind Pura became women. Chinese mythology has a number of flood stories, uniquely different from other cultures, in that their floods were not caused by divine retribution, but instead of natural anomalies. The most famous legend was the Great Flood of Gunyu, where during the reign of Emperor Yao, the Yangtze and Yellow River valleys flooded entirely and spread across the land, wreaking havoc and suffering to all in the water's path. Yao first appointed his relative Gun, who used an ever-expanding soil called Jirang to build dams and barricades in order to abate the flood. When this failed, Yao's son, Yu the Great, used Ryu Jingu Bang, the, an enchanted staff that would one day belong to Sun Wukong, to dig channels and irrigation trenches that lowered the waters to a safe level. In Hindu legend, the god Vishnu visits Shraddadeva Manu, the first man, and tells him that the world would be destroyed in a great flood. Manu built a boat which housed his family, Saptarishi, nine types of seeds and animals to repopulate the earth. He then tied it to the horn of a great fish, who guided it to the top of a mountain. After the floodwaters receded, Manu performed a ritual sacrifice to Vishnu and poured butter and sour milk into the sea. One year later, a woman rose from the water and announced herself as the daughter of Manu, and the two proceeded to repopulate the earth. Indigenous tribes of Mesoamerica believed the flood was one of several natural catastrophes that happened during mankind's creation. In Maya mythology, Huracan caused a great flood of resin after the first humans angered the gods because they were unable to engage in worship as they were made from wood. Huracan resided in the mists above the flood waters and spoke Earth until land rose from the seas. Humans had become monkeys, but later, real people would emerge, and three men and four women repopulated the world. An Ojibwe legend tells of how a great serpent caused a lake to swell until the waters angrily flooded the land as a last-ditch effort to kill the hero Nanaboju. Nanabuzu ran through the villages of humans and bade them to seek shelter on the mountain tops. The lake waters continued to rise until the mountains were beneath the waves, except the high one on which stood the hero. Nanabuzu made a large raft upon which he gathered the humans and animals to keep them safe until the floods receded and the great serpent had died. With so many cultures spanning the globe, telling a tale so eerily similar to one another, in spite of such vast distance, speculation begins on whether or not there was indeed a deluge that flooded the earth. Many villages and ancient cities were built in close vicinity to major rivers, such as the Nile River in Egypt and the Tigris and Euphrates rivers of Mesopotamia. It is common for major rivers to have annual floods. Some may even spread immense distances from their original banks. Geologists have proposed the possibility of a great flood in the Middle East at the end of the last ice age, circa 7,000 years ago. At that time, 
The Black Sea was a freshwater lake surrounded by farmland. The hypothesis is that the European glaciers had melted and the Mediterranean Sea overflowed with a force 200 times greater than Niagara Falls, resulting in an incredibly fast-moving wall of flood water. Physical evidence to support this theory includes Stone Age structures beneath the Black Sea. Around 1600 BCE, a massive volcanic eruption on the Aegean island of Thera destroyed a massive portion of the island, creating tsunamis in the Mediterranean Sea, leading to coastal floods on either side of the Mediterranean. Sizable meteors landing in the Indian Ocean, creating the Burkel Crater off the coast of Madagascar, would have caused a mega-tsunami, also leading to mass flooding along the coastlines. Other theories include the shifting of tectonic plates, glacial meltdowns, and the sudden release of the ancient Lake Agassiz in North America. But a question arises. Could an ancient civilization have carried collective memory of such an event for so long? And could that memory have led to the many flood stories told today? Though there are numerous myths about a great flood, with many unique elements to each story, they all have recurring elements of humanity becoming problematic, a god or other higher power becoming angry and wrathful, deciding to wipe out the world with water, while a select mortal or group of mortals are chosen to survive and begin the world anew. Could there be truth to myths of floods that span the entire globe? Perhaps we will truly never know. One thing that is for certain, water is the most powerful element on Earth, with the ability to both destroy and replenish. And nowhere is that more apparent than in the stories of a great flood, devastating all life, only for it to regrow stronger than before.